Conrad Waddington defined epigenetics in 1942 as the study of the mechanisms by which the genotype produces the phenotype in the context of development. Since then, epigenetics was redefined multiple times. We define epigenetics as the study of molecules and mechanisms that can perpetuate alternative gene activity states in the context of the same DNA sequence. This operational definition has several implications. Firstly, it encompasses transgenerational inheritance as well as mitotic inheritance and persistence of chromatin states throughout extended periods of time, even without cell division, for instance, in long-lived postmeiotic cells like adult neurons. Secondly, the DNA sequence to be considered depends on the biological system. In mitotic inheritance, one should analyze the genomic sequence of individual cells, whereas in transgenerational inheritance, one should analyze the DNA of the whole organism as well as of its microbiota, if it can contribute to inheritance. Thirdly, it explicitly extends the usage of epigenetic to regulatory processes that involve molecules known to participate in epigenetic inheritance, even when not addressing the epigenetic memory function per se. Finally, cases of inheritance that do not involve chromosomal components have been documented and it will be important to study them as well. Cellular identity is now accepted to be the result of the expression of a specific combination of genes. Chromatin is recognized to act as a carrier of epigenetic marks that can propagate active and silent activity states during cell division. Recent studies have underlined the importance of chromatin and DNA methylation as epigenetic barriers that prevent a rapid loss of active or inactive gene expression states that could lead to a change in identity. These systems also showed that gene expression can vary between cells within an individual tissue. A large body of evidence indicates that epigenetic inheritance is a multi-layered process in which multiple machineries using partially overlapping signals cooperate to build relatively large chromosomal domains which fold into specific high-ordered 3D structures and nuclear compartments. Each of these layers adds a degree of stability, but each of them is also reversible, allowing for plasticity in the presence of the appropriate regulatory cues. DNA sequence variation and epigenetics are inextricably linked. On the one hand, chromatin states that influence transcription factor binding and the precise relationship between histone modifications and transcription factor binding is protein family specific. On the other, DNA sequence polymorphism clearly influences chromatin states. On another level, DNA mutations that affect epigenetic components can perturb cellular states. Furthermore, chromatin and epigenetic components regulate genome stability and mutability, and their disruption can have important consequences on gene expression and genome integrity. Transposable elements and their relics can influence endogenous gene expression, chromosome functions, phenotypic diversity, and are usually sensitive to environmental changes, suggesting that they have an important adaptive role during evolution. The environment plays a major role in development and physiology of all organisms, including species characterized by a high degree of physiological homostasis, such as birds and mammals. Different species, however, differ strongly in the way in which they cope with environmental variation. The gene-environment interaction aims to understand how individuals with same or different genotypes respond differently to environmental variation. Environmental epigenetics in humans is still in early years and there are several challenges and confounding factors when trying to establish causality, such as multifactorial exposure, access to the appropriate tissue for sample collection, and assessment of DNA sequence versus epigenetic variation. The modern evolutionary synthesis postulates that evolution acts mainly via natural selection, operating on phenotypes, ultimately affecting the genetic diversity of populations and species. This diversity is proposed to be incarnated in the pool of DNA sequences of its individuals. In this DNA-centric vision of life and inheritance, DNA specifies organismal traits by driving synthesis of proteins and conveys information to future generations. 
we now know that non-DNA sequence information is heritable. Parental, ecological, behavioral, and cultural information can be transmitted to the next generations. However, if one assumes that DNA is the only source of heritable information, one could postulate that complex chains of DNA-driven events ultimately drive parental and ecological behaviors. In this view, parental or ecological inheritance, which appears as non-genetic at first glance, would be determined by the interplay between genes and environment. Therefore, one might still conclude that DNA sequence is the molecular substrate of natural selection. On the other hand, the demonstration that other molecules in addition to DNA carry substantial heritable information would represent an important conceptual change in biology and evolution. Recent work has shown that, in plants, unicellular eukaryotes and several metazoans, DNA methylation and or chromatin-mediated transgenerational inheritance does occur. Some evidence has been offered for specific cases in mammals, and future work is needed to understand how widespread this phenomenon might be. Are we ready to use knowledge in epigenetics to improve health? We suggest that we are approaching the right time for serving epigenetics because of recent progress in several areas. Molecular machineries and mechanisms enabling the transmission of epigenetic memory are being elucidated. It is possible to test whether they matter at precise stages of development, in adult tissues, in aging or in age-related diseases. In contrast to mutations, which can only be reversed by genetic engineering, Epigenetic alterations are more readily reversible and can be targeted with increasingly specific molecular screenings and design. New generation drugs are more specific and efficient, and the portfolio of target molecules is becoming broader. The combination of these facts is allowing the biomedical community to test the relevance of epigenetic components in specific diseases functionally, to exploit them as prognostic and diagnostic markers, and to use them as actionable targets for therapy.